All right, predicting with seasonality. So first thing you should double check is to make sure that there is a relative pattern to the spikes in the valleys. So you highlight the data, you go to insert, let's just put in a regular line graph. There's one right there. Yeah, that looks pretty predictable. Not perfect, you know, but it does. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Every, what is that, five months? Yeah, four months, five months. Okay, so this would be a good um, set of data to use seasonality on. So first thing we're going to do is highlight the data from each year and paste it. Copy, paste it. And 2015, ah, oh, that was a good year. Copy. Paste it. And 2016, that was a good year. Get all of them. Boom, 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 boom. And 2017, that too was a good year. I only have good years, you guys. Copy. Paste. All right, first thing you're going to do is probably get the total. You don't really need the total, but nah, I like totals. So we're going to go to auto sum. And be careful not to get the year. And then just hit enter. So there's the sum of 2013. I'm going to use the bottom right hand click and drag trick. So there's all the sums. I'm going to find the average the easy way equals I'm going to take the sum and just divide it by four so there's the average for 2013 click and drag those are all your averages so there's the first part second part we're gonna we're gonna find the averages on the using the predicted data matrix here the box so how we do that is you click the cell for quarter one in 2013 you go to the function bar you hit equals and then you're gonna take quarter one and you're going to divide it by the average of 2013 isn't that interesting so there is so in other words quarter one was 97 percent of the average so now look what happens if i try to click and drag this down i'm going to get an error message right because what happened is from this cell to that cell it bumped the one to divide by by to h19 i'll do that again so in the original cell we divide by h18 but because I, I slid it down one the computer thought that we moved it down one so that's not the case we're going to delete that i'm going to show you how to get around that you're going to click that cell and then if you don't want cell h18 which is the 5915 to move you simply go up to the function bar and put a dollar sign on either side of the letter that you want to stay frozen you don't want that to move so now when i do this it will it will move the top cells but they'll all be divided by the same number in the bottom cell isn't that amazing boop, boop, boop. Ta -da. wasn't that easy so let's do the next one click the cell function bar equals i want 2014 quarter one divided by the average of 2014, I'm going to put my dollar signs up there. Enter. And now I can click and drag, and it does all of 2014. I'll do one more, and then I'll pause it. So I'm going to quarter one, 2015 equals. I want 2015 quarter one divided by its average. Dollar sign on either side of the J. Can you guys hear that music out there? I live in a party in neighborhood. All right, hold on. I'm going to do the other two. And I'm done. I noticed the one right there. So that's kind of curious. That, so that means that that quarter from 2017 should be pretty much the exact same as the average. So the quarter for, there it is right there. So 62 divided by 6198. Yeah, that's close enough to two. So what the computer is doing is, is it rounding? Now we're going to find the average going this way for each quarter. 
So we're going to use the five-year quarter average here by doing this. We're going to type in equal average. should pop up. Highlight what you want the average of. Enter. So there's the average of the first quarter. Click and drag. Second quarters. Here comes the cool part. You should sum these here. Auto sum. And when they auto sum, it should come to the number of rows, which is four. Perfect. And I did it before. Yes, I did. So we did it right. All right, almost done. So what we're going to do now is we pretend that somebody gave us a prediction already for the next upcoming year. So they're, they're saying that the average should be around $92. We're going to use this average. We're going to multiply it by these quarterly averages to come up with the new prices. So we're going to pick that cell. We're going to hit equals. Boom. And I want that quarterly average shift 8. That means multiply by this average, $92. And I, I want that 92 to stay there. When I start dragging these formulas around, so I'm going to put a dollar sign around it, just a letter. Money, 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 boom. So there's the prediction, according to this, for the first quarter of 2018. If, if you go by this seasonality predictions, and there's all four of them right there. So I hope that helped. MGZ out.